Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is entitled Dafyom Tuvot Gimel Ahmed Bet. The Gemara talks about a tragic case of a status of a woman who's an honest, who's unfortunately being attacked by a vicious man. Could be a Jew, could be a uh, Gentile. In our case, it's a Gentile. And uh, they take the woman away from the husbands and rape them. Chas Shalom. Horrible, horrible case. The Gemara discusses what's what's the status of the woman. The Gemara says she's certainly anus, anusa. That's uh, openly discussed in the Torah. A woman who's an anusa, it's, it's not her fault. It's, and, and no way it's under her control. And Tosas has a fascinating discussion based on the Gemara Sanhedrin about Esther, where the Gemara has a famous phrase, Esther Kaka Olam. Esther Kaka Olam means that she did not uh, willingly uh, uh, be lie with Achashverosh, and uh, therefore wasn't considered to be Gile Ariot, and it also has a whole analysis of Gile Ariot with a Jewish woman and a Gentile man, what's the logic status of such a case? And Tosfa says that it's true that Karka Olam does help a woman get out of the problem of Ariot. She's passive, she's not involved, and therefore, because she's not involved, then she's not playing an active role in the relationship, and that's why it would not be considered a rayo, and she would not have to die in such a case because she's not actively involved. And that may explain Esther, except for one fact that Tosa says. Maybe there's another issue involved. Even if Karka Olam is a factor that would exempt a woman from a rayo, because she's not actively involved in the process, maybe another issue should prohibit such an act regarding Esther. What case is that? What halach is that? Chilul Hashem. The whole world knew that she's with Achashverosh. So yes, it's true that technically, it's true that technically she was kakol and she was being passive. But everyone knew that. She's married to Achashverosh, a Gentile, and that's, that's a horrible thing. And maybe the het of the permit of kakol should not be a factor here because you have Chil Hashem. And what does Tosfos say? Tosfos writes on our daf, Bet Amid Bet, he writes that even regarding the question of Chil Hashem, Karka Olam removes such a problem as well. Apparently Tosfos says, Havamina is that even if the act is not an act by the woman, the result is Chil Hashem uh, ostensibly, and therefore Chil Hashem, nothing stands with Chil Hashem, and Hester would have to give up her life. So the answer is no, karka olam, meaning even chil Hashem halachically needs some maisa, it needs some action, and she didn't do any action, because once halachically it's not defined as an action regarding be regarding the relationship itself, then there's no act to define regarding chil Hashem. That's Tosus's novel chiddush, and that explains Esther, that she didn't do any maisa. Luckily, there wasn't a Raya problem, and therefore, there's nothing to discuss regarding Chil Hashem. What mice, what action did she do? It's a fascinating Tosas, and just also a fascinating idea regarding Chil Hashem. Chil Hashem also always has to be defined. What halachically is an act of Chil Hashem? Can Chil Hashem be done when someone simply is passive? And the sugi, of course, has to be looked into like any other halachic sugi to define clearly and precisely the definition of what is Chil Hashem. Shalom.